is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Behind me we got the STI and I want to test something today because I have been very curious about this. We're going to be testing this Verus Engineering Hood Scoop Delete. Um, it supposedly is going to help reduce IAT temps by blocking off the hood scoop if you have a front mount intercooler. So. The theory behind it is the car is aerodynamically designed to allow air to go into the hood scoop, feed the top mount intercooler, and then pass through it to reduce charge temps or IATs. But since we have a front mount intercooler, the air just kind of goes in there and it just violently gets like thrown around. So instead of all the air going down into the front mount down there, it all gets thrown up into the hood scoop, goes into the engine bay and just gets like violently tossed around. Now we added the hood vents on the car to help extract heat out of there. But since we still have the hood scoop open, heat or just air is going in there and it's kind of messing up the aerodynamics inside of the engine bay. So in theory, the air should go down through there and then up out through the vents to help cooling. So it should pull through there push through there with that blocked off. But we're gonna actually test this. So the hood scoop delete just kind of sits up inside of the hood scoop itself. It doesn't actually delete it, it just blocks it off. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let the car warm up. We're gonna go take it out before installing this hood scoop delete. I'll strap the GoPro on so that way we can kind of see what's going on with the IATs. We'll go drive it around a little bit. We'll see what IATs are before having the hood scoop delete on there. We'll make a note of ambient temperature as, that, as well, so that way we have somewhat of a comparison. After we uh, drive it around a little bit without the hood scoop delete on there, we'll bring it back into the garage. We'll install the hood scoop delete up there onto the STI. We'll go back out, we'll drive it again. We'll see if there's actually any reduction in IATs, because I'm all about getting that colder air up into that engine. So after we get back from the first drive, I'll kind of go over everything that comes with the hood scoop delete setup for the car. So let me let this warm up. I'm just gonna jump over to the GoPro footage, or I'm just gonna jump over to the GoPro. We'll do a head mount again, so that way we can see what's going on and we will see how our IATs are looking before installing that plate over there. Okay, being in traffic does not really help our case. So I mean, just sitting in traffic with having the front mount, IATs aren't really getting above 70 degrees. I wouldn't really expect them to. Man, people are awful at driving. I'm seeing people like all over the place. So we're gonna go down this hill to like emulate city driving essentially, just to see what IATs come out to. Uh, at the bottom of the hill, we'll come up the hill just to put a little more load on the car. So that, I, that way we're not in favor of having extra airflow from going downhill. So we should be able to emulate this pretty well. But right now, IATs, just from some like regular city driving, uh, intake temperature is about 75 degrees and ambient temperature is about 66. Now do keep in mind that I do have a relocated IAT sensor in the cold side of the intercooler piping right before the throttle body. So that is going to help give us more accurate IATs instead of just reading it based off of the math. So I'm coming up to the entrance to hop on the freeway. So ambient temperature is still about 66 degrees. Our intake temps are about 75. So we're sitting at about, oh, no. Okay, JK, ambient temperature changed to 68 degrees and intake temps are 75. So we are about seven degrees over ambient temperature with the front mount intercooler and the relocated IAT sensor. So now let's hop on the freeway and see what kind of temps we're seeing on the freeway. Ambient temperature should stay the same at about 68 degrees. Uh, let's see what intake temps are. is now 70 degrees intake temperature is now 73 degrees so i mean just not having the hood scoop plate is not entirely that bad these two people are going to get an accident but i did want to do a little bit longer driving on the freeway just to be able to measure like an accurate gauge and give the intercooler time to cool down a little bit more so that way some of that ambient hot air from the engine has time to get cooled down or pulled off of the intercooler hop off the freeway and do it again. All right, so I am going to swing back over to the house. Uh, we are sitting at about five degrees below ambient after driving on the freeway. 
let's go back to the house. Let's get this hood scoop delete installed and let's see how much of a change it actually makes to our IATs. All right, so we're now back in the garage after our first drive. Ambient temperature and intake air temperature were not too bad. Intake air temperature was a little warmer than ambient by a couple degrees, not too much, but I am curious to see if this thing will make a difference. So let's go over what this comes with and uh, take a look at it, and then let's get it thrown in the car and see how it actually works. So this is the Verus Engineering Hood Scoop Delete. It's nothing more than a piece of aluminum that's been brake formed, shaped, and powder coated, but uh, I'm gonna be honest, it looks pretty good. The price for this thing was about 80 bucks, I believe. It was on back order when I bought it, so it was about a two week lead time to get it. So what you get with this is you get the hood scoop delete or block off plate itself. You also get this bag. They also sent me a, they also sent a koozie, which was kind of nice, so thanks Verse Engineering. Now with the, with the hood scoop block off plate, you get a nice plastic bag. You get one of their stickers, which everyone gives stickers. I am probably just gonna toss that because I don't ever have a need for them. You get one of their like aerodynamic cards and then you get the hardware with it. So I'm assuming they give you an extra screw and washer just in case you drop one or lose one, but it's essentially just two nut plates and screws that hold this thing into the hood scoop on the stock holes. So it's gonna be pretty simple to install. Now I do like what they did here with their logo. They kind of did not powder coat this area and they just left it like the raw aluminum look. So kudos to you Verse Engineering because that looks pretty good. This is the first Verse Engineering part that I've ran on the car. I'm interested to see if it actually works. Um, I do think that a little piece of weather sealing going around the edge of this would probably make it work better, um, but that was not provided. I might do that in the future just to see if there is actually any change in sealing the hood scoop to make sure no air is going in there because I do have a feeling that air is going to get past the sharp edges of the aluminum. Well, they're not sharp, but you know what I mean, the, the edges of the aluminum. But let's get this installed on the car. Shouldn't be too bad. Two bolts should just line right up and we'll get it on there. So this thing is incredibly easy to install. You've got one hole here and one hole here. Those are where the nut plates are gonna slide onto. I need to get the old clips out of there that I broke off. So if you have your like hood scoop still on here on the inside of the hood scoop, you're gonna have to take it off to be able to install this. You can put it back on if you want, but uh, I just suggest leaving it off because there's really not a point for it anymore. But it essentially just is going to sit right up there on the back side of the scoop, bolt in on these two holes there, and well, that's it. So I'm just gonna time lapse myself installing this thing on here. Once I get it on, I'll kind of show you guys where everything kind of slides into place just because uh, trying to get it from this angle while installing it is just, it's just not gonna work. Overall, pretty easy to install. You slide the two nut plates on the two holes right there and then obviously the two screws go there. Now the annoying part of this thing is that down here on the back side, there's some tabs that slide in between the hood and the hood scoop to be able to let it sit in there straight. But honestly, that took me like five minutes to install, so no complaints whatsoever. But it definitely does the job. Like you can see the hood scoop is blocked off. It's on there like pretty strong too. I do see down here on the edges, like you can push it in a little bit. So I do have a feeling air is still gonna get through there and down here on that other side. Um, like I said, I might put some weather stripping or sealant on this just to seal it up a little bit better, but overall we got a hood scoop delete on there now. So no air should be flowing up through this top piece anymore. So I am curious to see if IATs are gonna drop down here on the front mount intercooler. And then, like I said, when I was driving, I am relocate or my IAT sensor is relocated up into the cold side of the intercooler piping. So that way it's actually reading what's going through the intercooler and not pulling in any information based off of the math. So with that, let's hop back in the car. Let's throw the GoPro on and let's see if our IATs are any lower than they were before with this new verse engineering hood scoop delete on it. Okay, so we are going a different route uh, just because it's our last test, it's been, uh, been a little while so traffic has seemed to pick up a little bit on the main road uh, but with that being said ambient temperature has changed to about 79 degrees and uh, just normal city driving I've been driving for probably about five ten minutes now our intake temperatures are actually at 79 to 80 degrees so they're a lot closer to ambient temperature 
than they were before. So that hood scoop block off plate, actually we are now below ambient temperature. Uh, ambient temperature has just jumped up to 81 degrees. Our intake temperature is now 79. So, so far so good for just city driving. I mean, our intake temps keep going down. They're now at 77 degrees. So, so far from what I've seen, it's working. And they just keep going down. 75 degrees for intake temperature and 80 degrees for ambient temp. Not bad at all. So we're sitting at about three to five degrees below ambient temperature, which is not bad. For a, for an $80 hood scoop delete, so far no complaints. I am curious to see what our intake temps will be on the freeway once we get there. Because I'm assuming they're going to be, I'm gonna take a guess now and say five to eight degrees cooler than ambient temperature. But I mean, we'll find out once we uh, actually get on the freeway. down here why is there traffic everywhere it's one o'clock oh my god oh my god there's so much traffic all right i'm gonna end the video or i'm gonna end this clip once we get on the freeway i'll start recording again because this is just so much all right we've made it to the freeway let's see what we oh god let's see what we can get our intake temps to So ambient temperature right now is 81 degrees. Intake temps after just getting on the freeway are about 79, which is not bad at all. We're actually, we're below ambient temp right now, which is actually pretty good. Pretty good, pretty happy with that. Oh, I hope everyone turns right so I can, so we can go on my favorite turn. Come on. Go right, go right, yes. Oh no! You uh, I'm gonna let you get ahead then. It's like one of those super hard embankment. Oh, we caught up to the outback. Ruin the corner. So overall, ambient temperature is 80, intake temps are 77 degrees. I would suggest this part to anyone who, who is considering running it. Like I've seen some good temperature drops just by using this thing. It was only 80 bucks, so for 80 bucks, if you're running a front mount intercooler and you have a way to have air escape out of your hood, blocking off the hood scoop is not a bad thing to do or consider. It also will keep a whole bunch of schmoo from going through your hood scoop, but I don't know. So far, I'm happy with it. Easy install, it looks good, it functions how it should. It's not a huge drop in temperature, let me tell you that, but I think it does help. I think adding some weather seal going around the actual block off plate will benefit the hood scoop and the temperature drop that we would see from it. But let's head back up to the garage. Once we get up there, we'll close the video out. We'll do some final thoughts on the hood scoop delete. All right, back in the garage yet again with the Subaru. So overall, I think that it's worth it for 80 bucks for that hood scoop delete. It did do a difference in intake air temperature. I don't think it made a huge marginal difference in how much of a decrease that I wanted to see. I was hoping to see around, I don't know, six to seven degree drop in IATs um, just from the aerodynamics aspect of it. But a one to three degree temperature drop isn't bad either. And I'll take that. It does help the performance of the car. Cooler air going into the engine means better bang, cleaner bang, and more efficiency. So, I mean, 80 bucks, not bad. It doesn't look bad either. That was another thing I was considering. So this will be a temporary solution to the 
heat soaking issues uh, with the car, the vents and that hood scoop delete combined really do make a difference in the cooling efficiency of everything going on inside of the engine bay compared to what it was before. I mean, a stock hood, a stock aluminum hood is going to retain a lot of heat on the inside of the car and it's just going to end up just baking the entire engine. So the vents themselves and the hood scoop delete do a wonderful job in helping to bring those temperatures down a lot. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. Burris Engineering Hood Scoop Delete, I'd suggest it. If you are trying to reduce intake temperatures or um, just the aerodynamics of the car, if you are running a front mount intercooler. But if you like the video, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button and turn it blue like the Subaru. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, which I would greatly appreciate it if you were, because we got a lot of good stuff coming up here soon. Uh, yesterday, when I was up at the Mod Garage helping them install some parts, got some coilovers for the BRZ. The wheels shipped out today. I ordered the last of the turbo component stuff. I found a tuner and the MA Performance Turbo setup that we're gonna be doing on the BRZ is coming and I'll go into more detail in the entire BRZ build here in the next couple days for everyone. Uh, expected wheel horsepower and everything like that. So there's a lot of good stuff coming up, so you don't wanna miss it. So consider subscribing up in this like corner up here if you're not already. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.